Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Gary Hall from Exodus and formerly from Slayer, and you're listening to The Razor's Edge. You're listening to The Razor's Edge. My name's Matt, and I'm speaking to Jamie Jaster of Bloodstock. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Very good. Happy to be here. Signing was amazing. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah, we're hoping the wind dies down so we can blow some shit up and light some shit on fire. Absolutely. Safety first, obviously. Of course. Safety and logistics first. You know, we wanted to step up the show because mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a big deal to be in the top three. Of course. At, uh, at Bloodstock. But we are depending on the weather, so... The great, Knock on wood. The great British summer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, you know... We brought this fire out everywhere. We brought the CO2. We, we, we got the ball of death. We got all these fun things for the show. Mm. But it's some days you can't do it. The, no. the stage isn't big enough. The yeah. rain is coming down too hard. The wind is too hard. So, but we've done it about four times now. Uh, like at Brutal Saw, we had the full fire and it was great. Awesome. Well, uh, I know it's not your first time at Bloodstock. Hey, Breeder, been before. I, I met Jaster in the signing tent of 2018, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how does it compare to other European festivals, do you find? It's the best catering, it's the best backstage situation. I love not having to walk a mile and a half to get to the stage. There is that, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> no, and logistics-wise and setup is great. And it's just the, one of the best crews. Yeah. So professional. Everybody here is, is just a legend in the game. You know, and yeah. Alan and Vicky and their whole crew, the whole family, you know, the Hungerfords just as a family. It's, you really get that familial vibe, yeah. which is incredible. And the metal roots run so deep, so it's like, if you can't be inspired by that, you're just not even alive. You know what I mean? <laughs> Celebrating uh, 30 years of hate breed. Congratulations. Thank you. What's the difference in um, when you started playing shows in the mid 90s compared to what show? I mean, apart from the size of the audience, perhaps. How has touring changed over those three decades, do you find? It's actually kind of come full circle in a way where we're going back to the roots. Like on this tour, we've done some really small clubs, and that's been fun. And it's it's a challenge, but it's a, it's a fun challenge where we'll we'll play the songs from '95 and '97, and we like we're not one of those bands that doesn't have uh, the ability to to do everything in the catalog. We we will literally. There's no like songs we're embarrassed of or no records that we don't like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's we literally will play something from the whole catalog. Awesome. We, we're proud of that. Yeah, I think we've like was it eight albums on now. There's no reason you can't dip into everyone in a set list. You know, I mean, you, your songs aren't like ten minutes long either. So yeah, we've got the opportunity to deliver some deep cuts. And... I was saying to Wayne earlier, like we're lucky that when people come through the signing, they all request new songs. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's weird, right? Because you see legacy bands that most people want just the yeah. first three records or something. So this today at the signing, it was like everybody was requesting songs from Way to the Fall South and Divinity and Concrete Confessional. We just got our first hundred million streams. We yeah. broke a hundred million streams. So yeah. who knows? Like looking down the barrel might be a gold single at some point, which would be crazy. That would be really cool. So it could happen. And also Perseverance, uh, we're finally releasing it on vinyl, and they said that that might actually push it to gold. I read it. The album. So we might end up having a gold album on Perseverance, which would be amazing. That would be really cool. Are you thinking about the next album by now? Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of ideas. It's all out there to grab. Like, anybody can grab it. You just have to get into that creative uh, like flow state or inspired state I get which some people get you know from running or doing something strenuous or or just watching an inspiring film or, or you know being with uh, their friends or their family or everybody's got a different way to reach it with me I just have to recharge like I have to get home I gotta sit sometimes I gotta sit in the dark sometimes I gotta sit with the guitar and or I gotta just hear something and make it musical like hear something in my head and make it musical sometimes it'll be a fucking clinging in the air condition yeah, yeah, yeah. and I start making a riff over the beat of the air like you never know 
if you can find the inspirations in the small things like if you've got a creative mind I think. yeah it's weird like I'll be playing like a video game and I'll hear like a, a loop in the video game and I'll want to do like a lead over that loop yeah. and then that lead will be something that I time the lyrics to or whatever and that's, that's that's how some of those big songs come about. Yeah. It'll be something very, and then you have to not self-edit. Like live for this. My brain was telling me, no, it's too simple. And I said, no, simple is good. It's catchy. Ramones yeah, it's, is good. Yeah, Motorhead is simple. Yeah. ACDC is simple. And the, so imagine if I didn't, imagine if I self-edited and didn't put that song out, I would have, that was a life-changing song course, for us. Course, Got yeah. a Grammy nomination on it. So. Yeah. So that's another thing I gotta do for the new record. No self-editing. Just let it come and be, let it be what it is. Of course, let it be natural. Yeah. You had a collab with Body Snatcher recently. Yeah. So how did how did that come about? That was pretty cool. You know, we took we took them on the Perseverance 20th anniversary tour, and they were having such a moment, and it's extended. Now it's like this extended moment. I had them come play my festival, Milwaukee Metal Fest. And they just blew it up. They blew the doors off the place. And I was happy for them because they're that, I guess you would call them the th sort of third wave of deathcore or, or, or hardcore death metal. And uh, they hit me up. I said, absolutely. They've covered Smash Your Enemies too, which that kind of brought that to a new audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they introduced a lot of their young fans to our music, which is cool. It's like a push and a pull. You know, it's like it's ebb and flow. Circle, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they're true. Florida, so they know Frank. You know, Matt's in Florida now too. They're just great dudes. We love that band. <laughs> yeah, they're fun. Absolutely. Speaking of other bands, is there anything on the horizon for Kingdom of Sorrow at the moment? Yeah. Uh, Kirk has a solo record done. So Kirk, yeah, yeah. Kirk Winstein, uh, solo record album too. It's called Ethereal Waves. I executive produced it. It's coming out on my label. Then they got the new Crowbar, which will be out probably summer next year. And then we're tr we might try for winter of next year. It might be winter 2026, but I have three songs. One of them, actually I had four. One of them I put on my Josta record. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was called Spill Blood Never Dries. It was supposed to be a Kingdom of Sorrow song, so I just put it on the Josta record, but Kirk sings yeah. on it with me, and that got a really good response. And people said, oh, you guys should do another record, so. That's it, it's a hell of a scoop. No, it's interesting to hear that it's still uh, going, so thank you. Yeah, and I'm always writing. That's why with this new label, when you see Corpse Grinder, I co-wrote a lot of those songs. When you yeah. see uh, Ripper, uh, shout out to Tim. I think he, I think he'll be here with KK's Priest, or at some point, I think yeah. they're doing a UK tour soon. We, I co-wrote a lot of those songs with Tim and with Nick. So even though a lot of people are saying, "Hey, do the fucking Hatebreed record," it's not that I'm not working. Of course, yeah, yeah. I'm just still co-writing on a lot of other records. Well, we're at Bloodstock. What's the festival food like when you're uh, out and about? Do you find? Go. I do. I do the, the catering and I do the the stalls. The, 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 the stalls. Yeah. The, we call it Gen Pop. General population. Yeah, yeah. I love it. We the other night we went out at at uh, Brutal Assault and I had an entire fish. They literally Just a whole fish. with a head and everything. <laughs> And I, they were flipping it on. It was like smoked, and then they put it on the grill. Yeah. Oh my god, it was so good. And people were like, "You're crazy, dude. You're gonna be in the toilet." I was fine, <laughs> no problems whatsoever. So it was clean, it was fresh. Fish from Brutal Assault, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and thank you for your time. Anytime. It's been a real my pleasure to speak to you. This has you been too. Jamie Jaster from Haybreeds at Bloodstock. Thanks for listening. Make sure you keep up to date with future episodes by subscribing to our channels. For more information on this podcast, or for all the latest music news, reviews, interviews and more, head over to our website, www.theraziseedge.rocks.